Okay, so in this chapter, I just want to go over the difference between real-time lighting and between baked lighting. So as you can see, we have already went over the real-time lighting. Especially in Unreal Engine 5, you will most of the time, I believe, use the real-time lighting. Just because it has been so much of Unreal Engine 5 has been focused towards real-time lighting. However, baked lighting is very handy. Baked lighting, first of all, is very cheap. So it is great for things like mobile games. But also just in general, for example, for uh, PC games. And I would say it is often used in interiors. Exteriors, big exteriors especially, they often use real-time lighting. But for interiors, to basically push the quality a bunch, you can use baked lighting. Baked lighting is basically ju just a process where in real-time lighting, everything is, as you can see, calculated in real-time. You can move the shadows around in real-time, all that stuff. Baked lighting is if you know that your lights will not change. You basically have the baked lighting and it will just be almost like texture maps that are being displayed on top of your level. Which will make everything a lot cheaper. So over here, I don't need to go over real-time lighting because that's what we have been covering quite a bit lately. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you an example of baked lighting just so that you can see. And then I can also show you like a little bit of a difference. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this scene. And now I'm just going to go ahead and file and create a new level. And I'm just going to go in and just create like a default level. Now, just give me one second, I will just create like some very basic cubes for this. Okay, so here we are. So, I have created this little box. It's just an example, just so that you can see. So, with big lighting, if, for example, now over here we cannot see anything. What I can do is I can actually get rid of my light source. Yes, my skylight, my sky sphere, all of that stuff. Except for my reflection capture. I can technically get rid of, because it is not important for this specific scene. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead, go to lights and create a very simple rectangular light. Over here. There we go. Now we can see it. Now, right now, this light is stationary. You can see you have static, stationary and movable. I will go ahead and I will just place this light over here. And let's just place it at the top as like a ceiling light over here. As you can see. And what we can do is we can, for example, set the radius to be a little bit lower. So that it's not um, affecting... The entire room. This will give us a nice contrast as you can see. Then over for the rest. You can of course play around with the width and the height for this if you want. And you can also set the barn door angle. Which is basically the angle of your light. Which can give you like a little bit of a fall off. But this is like a great example. So right now. As I said before. Static basically means that this light will only be used in baking. Stationary means that this light will be baked down. But the system will expect this light that it can also still move. Uh, this one you only use in specific cases. And movable basically means that the light will be completely real time. And it will be ignored when you try to bake something. So what do you need for baking? For baking you need light map UVs. We can go ahead and we can have a look at that. So if we go ahead and although the mega scans do not always come with the light map UVs. We have imported an asset over here. Here let's just simply grab this asset as you can see. And let's just drag on our material on here. Oh, sorry. Let's set this to lit. There we go. Drag on our material. So here you can see that now we have our asset and we have our light. So with this asset, if I open it up, you have different light map UVs or you have different UV channels inside of Unreal Engine. These are often called UV maps. Well, uh, UV or UV sets, I should say, in 3D modeling programs. So this goes a little bit more technical. But just believe me. If you go to your UV... You have a UV channel 0. This basically will be the UVs for your actual model. So they will just be the UVs that you use to texture your model. Then you also have UV channel 1. Which in our case we generated. But you can of course also just import UV channel 1 as normal. And then use it for your light map UVs. The difference is this. So this is UV channel 0. And UV channel 1 is generated light map UVs. Now because this UV is very simple. Not much has changed. But the important thing for this is that all of these UV cells that you can see over here, they are not overlapping. That's the big thing. So in UV channel 1, you can do overlapping UVs and you can like uh, just stack everything on top of each other if you want. It's very specific to whatever asset you have. But your light map UVs can never overlap. Because if they overlap, you will get shadows in weird places. Now, you can of course over here, these light map UVs, we went into our import settings. And we did like just some general auto generating. If you however want to change these. You can always go into your general settings. 
And in here, you can set, for example, your light map coordinate index. So you can actually set this to be, for example, if it's zero, it will use this UV. And if it is one, it will use this UV. So you can, of course, go ahead and mess around with that. And you can set your light map resolution. This is the important one. Your light map resolution, the reason why it is so important is because if we go ahead and we go to our scene, and by the way, let me just uh, close all of that stuff that I do not need. Don't know why it's so slow to close. There we go. Okay, so if you go, and this is the first time that you will use a mode for this. If you go to lit, optimize viewports, you have your light map density. Now you want your light map density to be green. It basically dictates the resolution within your light map that your objects get. The bigger your object is, the more resolution it needs to be to not get to not receive low resolution light maps. You can see over here, this one, it is now set at 64. So as you know, as you can see, you really do not need a lot of resolution for this. But if I set this to, for example, 512 and press save, what you can see is it is red. This is basically the system way of telling like, hey, you are using way too much resolution. It will take you longer to bake. It will take you more memory, but you will not see an actual visual difference. And that's why you always just want to go ahead and set this to green. So if we go 64, see 64 is just green enough. And if you really, really want to push it, you can technically go 1 to 8, which uh, will become like green yellowish, like you can see over here. Now, there is a problem. Cubes that we have created, as you can see over here, using the default system, of course, you cannot just go into the mesh because that mesh doesn't technically exist. So you cannot actually set your light map resolution. However, if you have these cubes selected, and let's just say, let's select all of them because they are all blue. You can always scroll down and over here in your lighting, you can override the light map resolution here. So if I set this to 1 to 8, or actually let's do 2, 5, 6 for example, and then click away. You can see that now they are getting close. These light maps will not be perfect. If you want to make them perfect, you would need to make sure that they like scale like this. Um, so that the squares are actual squares and not like stretched out. However, technically, the light maps, they are very forgiving in this case. So yeah, I can set this to 512 and the stretching and everything, it is very forgiving. So as you can see now, only the top and the bottom is blue. So if I set this to 1024 and this one to 1024, which seems like a lot, but it's a very large looking asset. And then I can always just press G. Now you can see that everything is green. So if I now go back to lit, now technically everything would be ready for us to bake our lighting. And that's what we can do. So this scene right now is still running in real time, although it is most of the time just a preview. But if I simply go ahead and I select my rectangular light and I set this light to be static. Now what you can see is here at the top, lighting needs to be rebuilt because it can see that it, there is a static light. So what does it want you to do? It wants you to actually bake the lighting. And this is also where your world settings come in. In your world settings, you can often just change the settings, although most of the time, real time is fine. But there are specific settings in here that you can find that will slightly change your uh, lighting. It's basically just quality settings. If you like increase the settings, it will give you a higher quality, but it will make your baking a lot slower. So let's try this out. Let's go to details, static lighting, this is all looking fine and let's just simply go to build and then over here you have built lighting only but you can also set your lighting quality so right now it's preview which is like the lowest quality let's set it to medium for example what you can also see is reflection captures need to be rebuilt remember build reflection captures that's that one so press build lighting only and what it will do is it will okay yes allow access it will basically go ahead and it will start up the system that will bake down our actual lighting. It's almost like baking down uh, if you ever done like baking of meshes. So it will build the lighting. Now this is a very small scene so it should go very very quickly. Um, if you go over here. I'm already surprised that it's not done yet. There we go. 45. Come on. Okay I'll just. Oh no wait. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then once it is built. Because we are of course building on medium quality so it would take a little bit longer. But then what it will do is it will import all of these light maps. And what you will get is you will get... <laughs> when it is done importing. Okay so here we go. So now this is our imported lighting. As you can see 
the lighting is not correct. This is because with baked lighting, it's always a little bit tricky. Like often you just need to mess around with it and try to like make this a little bit larger. You can of course move your light and that would like take it back. But right now, what would most likely be the problem is that the global illumination is not as strong as that we want it to be. So what can we do? We can go ahead and we can, for example, set our iteration radius up and we can set our intensity to, let's say, 25. So we set like quite strong. Now, you can also go into your environment settings over here. And then over here, if we just have a quick look, uh, number of indirect light bounces, let's set this to six. What that will do is it will basically say like, okay, how many times do you want the light to be bounced off the wall and then uh, just like keep it bouncing around because light, when it hits something, it gets cast away again, it gets cast away again and again and again. And it will just keep doing that until there's no more light left to give. Now, next to this, what we can also do is although the environment color rarely actually does something, I sometimes do set it to white because it basically just says that all of this space on the outside is theoretically not going to be pitch black. For the rest of these settings, I'm just going to go ahead and I need to, uh, yeah, I think that all of that is fine. Then what we can do is we can go to build and just temporarily set this to preview so that we can actually uh, just make sure that everything is working correctly. And then we can, for example, build again. As I said before, light baking, it is a process. You need to go back and forth until you get exactly what you want. Now, what might be the problem he over here, for example, is that I have not added a skylight. So that might, for example, like be a problem. So I'm just going to pause the video until it's done. Okay, so I built the lighting again. And again, my scene was black. So I found that strange. Now, I had a little look and it turns out that, and this is specific to Unreal Engine 5. You will not get this in Unreal Engine 4. But uh, it turns out that you cannot actually use Lumen, at least not the global illumination Lumen. So you want to set the global animation in your render settings, in your project settings to none. Um, because it basically breaks it. I think what the reason why it is doing this is because it's trying to add, add real-time global animation on top of a baked level. But because the level is only baked, it basically does not have any light to work with. Now you can go ahead and if you want you can set the, uh, these other ones also to none. Like the reflections for example. Because we will have like our reflection capture. So now you can see that it instantly worked. I, by the way, set my intensity back to 10 over here. But as you can see, this level is now baked. So this is all baked lighting that you can see over here. So that is now working quite well. You can also always go in here and just say like lighting only. And then you can see that this is literally only the light maps that you can see over here. Which is all working quite nicely. As always, I can go ahead and if you want to, for example, have like stronger shadows. That's the thing with this one. Remember how I said that? Um, the lighting is not perfect because our visualization over here, sorry, this lighting complexity over here, because, um, this one, it is green, but, uh, yeah, the shadows, they can only just hold up because we did not create proper light map UVs for a base object like that. That's why it's often not used. But for the rest, I would say that the lighting is working great. So that's a very, very, very quick introduction on light map baking. As I said before, it's good that you know about it. And especially for interior scenes, I would definitely use this kind of stuff. For example, this is like an environment that I made. And although it is Unreal Engine 4, this is all baked lighting. And because it is an interior, because it is an interior and there's a lot of little lights, I would not want to use like real-time lighting for this. Sorry for the low resolution screenshots. It's actually looking a lot better um, when you actually see it in engine. So yeah, here the screenshots don't really hold up. But um, as you can see over here, this is all baked lighting. And that's basically the goal. So it just depends on your environment. But it can be a very powerful tool to make your scene run very smoothly. And this entire scene, because it was like made for the Unreal Marketplace, this scene runs on a good PC. It runs at 200 plus FPS. So it is very optimized. While if I would want to go ahead and do real-time lighting on this, it would be far less optimized. Now... I could of course try to show you the FPS, but it wouldn't really work. Like here, this FPS, it's not too accurate right now compared to like if I go for baked lighting versus, for example, uh, movable real-time lighting. See, you, you will not be able to see a difference. But I just wanted to show you this. So this is the overview of baked versus real-time lighting. And now what we will do in the next chapter is we will continue by talking about optimizations. This time optimizations in terms of a mesh using level of detail. 
And of course, I will also just um, let you know about like the nanite meshes. So let's go ahead and continue with that in the next chapter.